love looking at animals. Pretty awesome. What do you notice about them? Now how about these animals? Pretty ultra awesome. What do you notice about them? Today, I'm going to help my friends, the Quinks, learn my animals look the way they do and the special abilities they have that help them to live and thrive. Are you ready? Then let's get Quinkin! Quinks! Quasar! Quinks! Neutrino! Quinks! Blood! Quinks! Here, why? What is that thing? Don't be afraid, Quasar. It's just a cute little frog. I think you mean dog. Oh, yeah. Guess you're right. No worries, Flux. I make mistakes like that all the time. You do? Hi, Quinks. Meet my new friend, Fluffy. Fluffy? Even his name is terrifying. Well, I think Fluffy is so adorable. Me too. Let's get a closer look. Introducing my latest invention. The Bubble Pod Magnifier. Humongous fluffy eye. What do you notice about Fluffy's eyes, Flux? They're black and round and shiny, <gasps> like a marble. What do you notice about Fluffy's fur? It looks thick and soft and kind of curly. Notice about her teeth. They look kind of pointy. <laughs> pointy? How about the sharpest, most ferocious teeth I've ever seen in my entire life? Huh? They're adorable! Adorable? Really? There's nothing to be scared of, Quasar. We're just taking a close look at some of Fluffy's traits. Trait? That's a new word! I love new words! What's a trait? Scientists use the word trait to describe a significant feature an animal has, like the color of its eyes, the thickness of its fur, the length of its nose, even the number of legs it has. People have traits too. How good are you at picking out traits? Are all dogs as adorable as Fluffy? That all depends on what you find adorable, Flux. Since there are all kinds of dogs. Dogs of every size, shape, and color. I want to see that! I want to see that, too! <laughs> the last thing I want to see is more fluffies. Hey, wait up! How'd it go? We saw so many kinds of dogs! And we took pictures of them and everything! Prepare to be scared out of your mind. Oh, 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 oh. 
See what I mean? Not exactly. Ooh, look at my pictures. Mine too. So what do you notice about them? In some ways, they look kind of the same. That's because all dogs have some traits that are the same as every other dog. Let's pick out the traits that are the same. Let's see. All the dogs we've seen have four legs. They all have two eyes and one nose. And they all have that weird waggly thing behind them. Ugh, creepy. That's called a snail. I think you mean tail. Oh, yeah. Now, how about some traits that are different? Like how big they are. Bubble Pod, <coughs> show us each dog full size. <coughs> Cool. Feel like sorting them by size, Flux? Okay, Sophie Rose. Here I go. Well, that's not right, is it? No worries, Flux. Try again? No thanks, Sophie Rose. I've made enough mistakes for one day. Sounds like someone needs a song. Everybody gets it wrong sometimes. Even you? Even me, but when you make a mistake, it's not a crime, it's a learning opportunity. Keep on trying, get better. Get it right before too long So be strong And stand tall It's alright To be wrong It's alright To be wrong Okay, Sophie Rose, here I go again! Bigger, bigger, biggest, perfect. Can you sort animals by their traits? Nose length, fur color, ear shape. Dogs have so many traits. What's up with the flux? Quakes quiver when they have a question. Well, what do you guys do? Where do animals get their traits? Good question, Flux. Where do you think animals get their traits? <laughs> Hickory Nut Farm! I wonder why Sophie Rose told us to come here. Maybe this is where animals get their traits. Let's ask inside. Fine. At least there won't be any fluffies in there. Hi. Hi, I'm Zed. We're Quinks. We're from... What is that thing? I think it's called a goat. Right you are. His name's Tuffy. Tuffy? Really? He won't hurt you. Goats are gentle and fun-loving, especially when they're young, like Tuffy here. Is this where animals get their traits? 
Not exactly, but there are some goats I know who might have the answer. Follow me. If the goats are that way, I'm staying right here. Or maybe not. Quinks, meet Tuffy's birth parents. Juniper and Roger. What do you notice about them? I think Tuffy looks a lot like his mother and father. So maybe that's where Tuffy got his traits, from his parents. Super thinking, Quinks. Tuffy got some treats from his birth mother. <coughs> some traits from his birth father. <coughs> and some traits from both his parents. <coughs> Mega fascinating! Flax, can you see some traits Tuffy got from both his parents? Let's see. He has four legs like his parents, two eyes, and two ears, and two of those pointy thingies sticking out of his head. I think those are called horns. Now, can you spot traits that Tuffy got more from one parent than the other? The color of his fur? <gasps> That's what I was thinking, too! Color markings on Tuffy's fur appear to be more like his mother than his father, especially around his eyes. Looks like what you said is true, Zay. Tuffy got many of his traits from his parents. And that's not just true for Tuffy. All animals get their traits from their birth parents. People too. Ooh. Hey, where's Quasar? I'm right here. I'm in stealth mode so the goat won't eat me. Let's go! Bye, Zay! The Quinks sure are learning a lot about where traits come from. Let's see how much you know about it. So, Quinks, what did you learn? We learned that a goat gets some traits from its birth mother, some traits from its birth father, and some traits that are a mix from both parents. And we learned that's not only true for goats. Every animal on Earth gets traits from its birth parents. People, too. Quasar. You're still in stealth mode. Whoops. And now we know everything there is to know about traits. Not quite. <laughs> it's okay, Quasar. Remember, it's all right to be wrong. Thanks, Flux. So, Sophie Rose, what else do we need to know about traits? Look here, Quinks. Dairy goats, like Tuffy and his parents. <coughs> Mountain goats. <coughs> what do you notice about them? They look so different. Team? We must figure out why the goats look so different. Can you think of a reason why the goats look so different? Quinks. Animals, like people, need certain things to stay alive, like food and water. 
and protection from the weather and other things that might hurt them. So animals have some ultra awesome traits that help them to survive, even in the toughest environments. Mega ultra awesome! Let's see if that's true for the goats. The mountain goat's fur looks longer and thicker. Maybe it lives someplace really cold. Super thinking, Quasar. Mountain goats often live in very cold places, so warm, thick fur can be a good trait to have. Even Fluffy here has some ultra awesome traits. Thick fur, sharp teeth, and ears that can hear 200 times better than humans. Fluffy is so ultra awesome! I guess she kinda is. Everyone back on Planet Q is gonna wanna know about this. Team, it's time for Mission Ultra Awesome Animals! Then let's get Quinkin! <laughs> Bubble pod. What kind of animal is this? Ka-me-le-on. Chameleon. What's up with the eyes going all over the place? <laughs> I want to try that. How do the chameleon's eyes help it to live and thrive? Maybe they help the chameleon see things that might hurt it. Totally possible, Flux. The chameleon could watch the movements of a threatening animal with one eye while scanning for other dangers with the other. Bubble Pod. What kind of animal is this? Fennec Fox. Fennec Fox! Look at the size of those ears. How does the size of the fox's ears help it to live and thrive? Maybe those big ears help it to find food. Totally possible, Quasar. According to my research, a fennec fox can hear a cricket crawling in the sand dozens of yards away. Impressive. Eb, uh, what's a cricket? Look at the cute little fishy! I don't know, Flux. Those pointy things sticking out of it look pretty nasty. Bubble Pod. <laughs> what kind of animal is this? Puffer fish. Puffer fish! How does the fish's shape help it to live and thrive? Maybe it scares other fishies away. Totally possible, Flux. According to my research, the puffer starts out looking like any other fish. But when another fish tries to eat it, it puffs itself up so it looks like a spiky ball. Which would make any fish lose its appetite. I guess that's the point. <laughs> is it me or is that bird wearing a spoon? Bubble Pod, what kind of animal is this? Spoon Bill. Spoon Bill! Yes! Totally got the spoon part. How does the shape of the animal's bill help it to live and thrive? I got the spoon part! I got the spoon part! Um, I'm not sure. Let's look again. It helps it catch fish? Totally possible, Flux. Because the bill is so wide and flat at the end, it would make it easier to scoop up the fish it likes to eat. Like a spoon. Did you say spoon, Flux? It just so happens that I'm an expert in spoons. So if you ever have any questions about spoons... Hey, wait up! Can you think of other traits that help animals survive?
Hi. Hi, I'm Dr. York. We're Quinks. We're from outer space. We're here to learn all about your planet. What we're exploring now is how traits help animals to live and thrive. Well, you come to the right place. I'm a veterinarian, and my job is to help animals who can no longer rely on the traits they were born with to live happy, comfortable lives. True has hurt one of her legs. We're going to make an orthotic for her. Orthotic! That's a new word! <gasps> Two new words in one day! An orthotic is a device that helps animals move better. First, I have to examine True very closely so I know what parts of her leg are damaged. Then, I carefully measure the damaged area so I know exactly how big the orthotic has to be. Now I communicate what I've learned to the engineers at Orthopets, the company that will design and build the orthotic. And sometimes animals even return the favor. Animal traits can give scientists and engineers ideas that can make people's lives better and easier. See if you can build something based on an animal trait that will make people's lives better. We'll totally try. Bye, Dr. York. Thanks from Outer Space. Can you think like an engineer and make something mega amazing? We're back! And we learned so much about how ultra-awesome traits help animals to live and thrive. And now that I know that Fluffy's traits make her the way she is, I feel a little teensy bit better about her. But if you think I'm gonna get all mushy like Neutrina and Flux, <laughs> forget it. Okay, she's adorable. Aww. And I learned something else that's really important. Keep on trying, get better and better. You'll get it right before too long. So be strong and, and stand, stand tall. It's all right to be wrong. work here is done. Bye, Sophie Rose. Thanks for everything. We'll be back. And I hope you'll be back to help the Quinks make more discoveries. Till then, let's all be explorers and see what we can discover about this beautiful blue planet of ours. Are you ready? Then let's get
They're from a far off place. Quakes. Deep in outer space. Quakes. Tiny aliens. Quakes. Who want to be our friends? They're quakes. 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 Quakes.